Good morning to you and to all of you out there, our partners and those who just stumbled into to this video. This is a very important moment in the history of the nations of humanity. Very, very important in the history of Europe. Very important in the history of America. Very important in the history of the African people. This is a very important time in the history of Asia. This is a very dynamic period in the history of the Middle East. Uh, some years back, and especially some months back, the Almighty God that I serve began to stir me up through dreams, through trances, through spiritual sensitivity and the inward witness, through prophetic oracles into my life about the things that are going on in the world and the things that are gonna happen. In my past, this has been an ongoing trend. And in today's world, this has become even more radical and more rational. No longer just from a supernatural divine perspective, but as it is in the world today. So I welcome you to World Rulers Institute of the Dikai Mary's Ministries. And today we want to functionally embrace and begin to look at as individuals, families, groups, nations of the world, what God is saying regarding who you are, regarding where you are going as a nation. Some years back, two of my elders were discussing about who is going to be the next leader in the country that I was originally born. I was sitting in the car with them. One of them was driving. I was sitting with the other one. And they were talking, it's going to be this, going to be this. Then suddenly I spoke. I said, it's going to be this man. They said, how do you know? I said, I know. Both of them knows how God operates with me in the prophetic, in the miraculous they know how God, visible presence, meets with me. And I salute it. That very night, I had a dream of this man that I talk about. I saw him in front of the magazine, in front of the newspaper. And I was reading the newspapers in my dream. I read newspapers and magazines in my dreams. And when I wake up, when I look them up online or I go out there to buy them, it's something I've already read. Those articles I read, those of you who know how the supernatural operate in what I'm talking about, you know what I mean. These are part of what happens in the divine. There was also another leader. People were complaining that he needs to go. And I took it upon myself because I am a world ruler myself. This is true. I make rulers and I remove them. I prayed and I said, oh, Father, you told me that I am a ruler in this earth. Whoever I say go, goes. Whoever I say stay, stays. Although I've tried to keep it quiet, and God said, you cannot do that no more. So I said, God, get rid of that man. I need some other person to be in that position to run the affair of that country. It was, I think, about two weeks or so. That man was flown somewhere. He never came back bodily. God got rid of him, not just the position, but he got rid of him from this earth. The reason why the Hitlers of this world, why evil rulers persist, is because those of you who have the power to do something. We are not talking of human power. We are talking of spiritual dynamics. 
that are able to articulate the force of God on earth, you are not doing anything with the authority that you have. I'm doing something with mine. These prophetic oracles, I ask God to give me spiritual wisdom as to how to put it across to you, to your nation. This is concerning all the nations in the world. So come to this video and check out what is spoken about your nation. Although I do not mention name, but you will know that I'm talking about your nation. And I'm talking about your people. God has given me that wisdom not to mention names, except in rare cases in this video. It's a long, it's a long video, but if you're interested in the prophetic, then you sit down and you listen very, very carefully. Because you love this. My job in the prophetic is not to demote you or to harm you to harass you embarrass you it is to build you up the job of prophets is to encourage it is to confirm things that those who are already born again and, and have received the gift of the holy spirit already have the inward witness our job is just to confirm i enter the prophetic from time to time as god deem it fit for me to have insight into these things so here we go These are the things that God is concerned about. And these are the ways he wants to solve humanity's problems. So let's go with it. First is God's concern with rulers and with leaders. Leaders who do not know how to rule and rulers who do not know how to lead. That's number one. So think about your country, whether that is going on. For leadership and rulership is an opportunity that God gives God gives. To humanity as a blessing or as a judgment so look at your country and see whether those who are ruling or leading them are a blessing or whether they have brought a judgment on your nation and then you begin to do something about it <laughs> is those who are leading you have they brought a blessing to your nation or have they brought a judgment then whichever way you consider it do something about it quickly because if judgment continue then you guys uh, <laughs> it will not it will be very difficult for you guys to wriggle out of this to do something quickly either you get rid of the ruler or the leader and replace him with somebody who has the blessing of God on his life that's what we are talking about someone who sees that position not only from the point of power and profit, but the, from the point of power, profit, and service. Let's, everything must be there. Leadership and rulership is no longer going to be a one-way ticket to personal aggrandizement and small group of, uh, 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 satisfaction. The wider community must be carried along. Now, with this, let me go to the next one nations and leadership for leadership for those in government or in position of authority to be a blessing god is saying that they must provide the citizens before they are voted in with a copy of what he called a manual of operation many leaders we do not know what they believe we do not know where they stand for, what they stand for they are simply political and financial opportunists who can cross any party can say anything can do anything just to be in a place of profit and power and be in control of things even though they will not profit those they represent okay except those who gave them money and supported them to be in that place the, the highest concentration of those who back him up to be in that position so he will sign legislations that will profit those people and if he was to be with the other group he will now sign against these other people so we need a manual of operation to know who our leaders are what is their core values what do they believe in as a person not as a political entity or as a political group what do this person believe in who is this person this is what we need to know so that our leaders will stop being a judgment bringing us curses and judgment instead let them bring us blessings the blessing will come by openness 
a lot of leaders and rulers, we don't even know who they are. So God is so concerned about this. This is, this is one of the core things that we must begin to do. Another thing that God is saying is that today's society is an entertainment-oriented society. We are no longer interested in fact and to verify things. We take everything as a show until the debt start piling up. Until the death, dying start piling up. Until riots start breaking out on our streets. Then we begin to think about that we didn't do a good job at vetting those that we, we bring into the position of authority. So these are the things that we as nations must begin to do. And it is the individual with the voting card who has the legal right to begin to do these things. And when leaders and rulers refuse to give us their manual of operation, then we should get rid of them quickly before they become a thing of judgment and bring judgment on us instead of a blessing. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. The next one is rulers who do not know how to be leaders. Especially in some of the countries out there, Africa, um, uh, the Middle East, a lot of the Arabic world, um, some of Eastern Europe, we see this happen. A lot of rulers who do not know how to be leaders and a lot of leaders who do not even know how to be rulers. So this is what God says. Those who do not know when to permit change or changes to happen in their nation and allow it freely will pay a great price for their foolishness. Any political group that does not know and does not spend time to read the signs of the time that what they are offering the people is old stuff, old sified, no longer necessary. Both the leader and the rulers will be swept away, either by a current tide that comes from the supernatural through the people, or through their own personal fabric of soul in anguish will sweep these leaders and these people out. And even if you send all the police force and all the military to come out and kill the people, they will still sweep you out of office. This is what we have seen in the Islamic world. Let me go on to say a little bit more about that. The Islamic world are going to go through many phases of changes. Most people are saying, now that the Arab Spring has happened, what is going to be, how are the Western world, especially the United States, going to relate with the new Islamic um, government in these uh, nations? Well, the reason why they were overthrown in the first place was they had puppet rulers. They had puppet leaders. They were not real leaders. They were not true rulers. They were only supplying for their own little group and enriching their families. So the people found a way of, lead, of getting rid of them through the chanting of religion. They discovered themselves through their religious identity as Muslims. And because of it, they decided to get rid of them. But that is not enough. Because the young people who did this game were like, uh, leopard and cheetah that went and hunted and the and the and the hyena came and got and got it the islamic brotherhood etc were waiting for the cheetah to go and do the killing for them so the young ones the cheetahs went and did it for them and then the hyenas came around and took the government they took the positions of authority and they did not give any of the only space to these young ones to even participate in government you see how it goes. Now, what I'm saying is this. The very young ones who tolerate using religious identity to 
formulate a new position in some of the Islamic countries that have just gone through some changes, what is going to happen is the same spirit is going to come back on them. And they will be the same people who will look and see that their countries are lacking behind in science and technology. That religion is not enough to formulate policies and implement policies that is going to be the fundamental foundations for the civilization of their society. So once again, they are going to revolt. So more revolts are coming in the Islamic world. I see it. I know it. It is coming very, very soon. Yes, because the mind is not yet satisfied. You can be satisfied with the event that has happened, at least that removed the old regime. But remember that the old regime always perpetuate themselves within the framework of the new. And that is what has happened. So let the Western world and America not think that, oh, come on, we've lost out. But then God is saying, for those of them who are sons and children of peace, make uh, 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 be their ally. Let them be your ally and be your eye where they are. For in so doing, you know what you do, the B word. The balkanization, the infighting between the group, you take advantage. That's how it is. That's how the game is played. Heaven sees this. What I'm trying to say is this. Changes are coming. The metamorphosis has not yet happened in the Arab world. It's coming. And those who are rulers in the Arab world must learn something. They must begin to change quickly into leaders. And I will tell you the kind of leaders that are needed in the Arab world. They are leaders who are going to be religious, at the same time accept secularism, and at the same time played within the center. They are neither to the extreme, nor are they to the other extreme. They are the people who are going to bring everyone together and formulate a new nation for the Islamic people. That's what's going to happen. Turkey is at the forefront of some of these things. Although once in a while, certain groups try to lead them backward. They, they are at the forefront of it. Saudi Arabia is really backward in terms of many things. And they have to open up because when it explodes among them, not even the house of the king will be able to contain the outburst of wrath. Now let me go on in what I have to say. Okay. Nation that started out with religion. If religion was the identity of your nation, if religion was at the center when your nation was being formulated, was being birthed, you have to reintroduce religion as an identity of your own people. For example, there is a wide acceptance in the American fabric of life that uh, Christianity, especially Protestant religion, also Catholicism, that they play a major part, um, including Judaism, etc., that they play a major part in the formulation of the American society. Now, the primary spirit of blazing also is within the center of religion. So, any nation that has a religious identity should re-enact it back into the center. Not that it should be the all and all and shocking all but that it should be a path and parcel of the identity of the people. Now, let me go to the next one. The kind of leaders and rulers that are needed in today's world, they are to be center-oriented people. They are to be center-oriented people. They are to be people who are well experienced in the art and science of toleration, 
and and they give freedom to their people they give freedom and influence their people towards building strong relationship with other nations there are people who give freedom in worship freedom in entrepreneurship that is in starting your own business they give freedom in the advancement of human lives so that people do not just get blown up god is tired with unnecessary shedding of human blood in iraq in afghanistan and other places of the world the earth is crying out against the unnecessary shedding of blood the unnecessary shedding of the blood of the u.s ambassador to libya cries out to god there should be a strong awakening in libya of something terribly bad that they have done leaders who are needed into this world are leaders who knows how to fight when fighting is necessary and who knows how to keep peace when peace is necessary not cowards we don't need cowards as leaders anymore into this society they are to be leaders who if they are to qualify as leaders who support very strongly and implement the policy of marriage as a union between a man and a woman and also kids are born into such a union and such kids are raised in such a union and the parents become the oracle of giving that child his or her cultural spiritual and national identity the parents are responsible for this those of you who followed my ministry knows I'm not against gay people, but this is what I say. In my church, that I, my denomination, we do not, and we will never allow a man and a man to marry, and a woman to a woman to marry. We will never do it, and I will never do it. Neither will I support anything that has to do wait the desecration of human life that we call abortion or killing people unnecessarily next nations must emphasize leaders must help nations to emphasize art science technology the social sciences and individual entrepreneurship reason is because some countries emphasize one aspect above the other aspect and for your people to be really well-rounded and prepared to compete in today's world you will need them to at least be well oriented in each of these things we should have an all-round education so that people are really not ignorant of what they should know that will help them they should be that place where people who do not who, who are not college gifted should be able to go to technology school and learn and learn handworks that will still make them a, a, a millionaire and a billionaire let's go to another thing there is also has happened in modern history the abandonment of the elders the infants and the young adults teenagers we have reached that point where the cry has come up to god that young people have been abandoned 
they've been abandoned to cell phones and computers and uh, they've been uh, the elders too are getting abandoned there is gonna be a big explosion of the problem of the elders of the young people and of infants being abandoned that is why God is calling me to build him orphanages around the world and the various structures to support such and also to build him nursing homes assisted living facilities and retirement homes you can help me to fulfill this vision any nation that abandon its elderly population for any reason at all abandon the young people abandon the infants is gonna pay heavy price for that we call that foolishness because if you abandon this group of people who are helpless well you are done what about the poor if you abandon the poor because of your policy and if you abandon the young people because of their policy or because of their ideology or their lifestyles you stand to be judged before the court of the living God if you make policies that make the elderly population to become beggars whether now or in the future you stand to be judged in the court of the righteous both here and above and that nation will be under a curse there's more that i want to say in this aspect nation should do a lot to help individuals in their private entrepreneurship there has been an abandonment of business to just the few nations must begin to do something to address these issues of elders of infants of young people and also of the poor the mentally retarded the disabled these are all call for society to address the church must get involved here religious group must get involved here not just government because if government continue to do this all by themselves the resources will all wear out in nations but we must find way as nations to do this this is very very important to god not only that nations must find way to address the issue of health care the issue of education the issue of agriculture and the issue of business and the issue of immigration let me tell you this the poor and the immigrant the widows the elders the young people are at the very heart of god and when we begin to use these people as political um puppets toys to achieve our political aims we stand condemned before God. We stand condemned before the Almighty as a nation. When we ever, any nation that begin to cut off all the things that they uh, have been doing for this group of people I've mentioned, and you say for the sake of politics and whatever, you cut off all the relief that should go to this group of people, the disabled, the oldies, and all of that veteran soldiers those who come back blown up shattered shattered in mind and body and spirit if we keep because of ideology not to allow them to enjoy life to the fullest until their very end it brings a curse on the nation so it's not just the gay community and the abortionist that is bringing a curse it is the policy that we write into law that is bringing a cost upon uh, upon the various nations of the earth so we must address the issue of health care quickly the issue of how we dispense medical care there has to be this is what god is showing me there has to be a coalition a negotiation between the private sectors and the government both of them must work hand in hand to carry this out 
It's not the, the private people should not be allowed just to run these things all by themselves. Healthcare, education, all these kind of things. No. The government must be involved in this as an umpire, as an eye that regulate for good, not for evil. Not for the advancement of one party against the other. Again, the idea and the place of the immigrant is very, very important to God. When they cry out against your nation, you are finished. But today, in some countries, we've taken the thing of immigration to be a thing of fun. Wanting them to ostracize themselves, remove themselves. We say all manners of things against these people. Let me remind you, one of the core driving machines of any nation is the immigrant population. Immigrant population. But then God wants us, as we advocate for the immigrants, to say to the nations, be careful about who is coming into your country. Because there are some people who are coming into your country as immigrants, and they are actually spies who come to set out witness and blow things up for you. So we have to be very careful. This especially is for the United States, is for Canada, is for uh, Europe, Spain, Portugal, Belgium. It is for uh, Norway, Finland, all those countries. And also for England. I see it for England very, very strongly. Very, very strongly. So let's take note of that. Okay. Next thing is the issue of nationalism. Many leaders in countries like Russia, Venezuela, China, and North Korea, Cuba, um, Libya, and some of the Arab worlds, etc., and some one or two nations out there in Eastern Europe too, I have to mention, are kept there by what I call the inside people. The people are being kept by the charges, the forces of nationalism. These leaders and rulers know that these people love their nation and they use the love of nation against them and perpetuate themselves in power when it is absolutely unnecessary. Places like Zimbabwe, you know, it's a good thing for African people to be free. But how did you do it? Did you need to chase the white farmers away? See, So some of the things that people did in the past sometimes comes up to catch them. But there is a place for us to negotiate the present so that everyone will work together. So when you tell the white farmers to go, did you prepare the blacks to take their place in producing food? No. So you see, this is it. South Africa was smarter. South Africa, when Nelson Mandela came out, said, don't fight. Let us all work together as a rainbow nation. So God is calling nations to emulate what South Africa has done. That was very, very good. Although South Africa has its problem, and I'm going to address it when I begin to talk about what I saw concerning Africa. South Africa still has a big problem. So don't think Zimbabwe only has problem. Nigeria has a big problem. Kenya, all these countries, they do. Russia has a big problem, not Korea. China, they all have. You see, nationalism should no longer be the reason why certain people should perpetuate themselves and their families in position of power, in position of authority. They should no longer be allowed to do that. Because these nations need to go on. They need to go on in the enterprising spirit and soul of the business of this world and not being held a hostage by some people who uh, sing the praise of grandeur of their nation, whereby they should have opened their nations to positive criticisms and grow. Next thing, this one is very, very important. This is about prophets and the prophetics from the churches. God showed me something that mystified me that is so unreasonable. Why is it that when a prophet 
who leans towards Democrats sees a vision. That vision is against Republicans, people in the Republican Party, or what the Republicans are doing. And someone who leans towards a Republican ideology and agenda and principles, when he sees or her sees a vision or prophesy, it is against those who are Democrats. Either someone is seeing a vision against John Edward, against Barack Obama, against Jimmy Carter, against Bill Clinton, or in the opposite direction, they are seeing a dream or vision, a judgment against um, the works of Ronald Reagan, George Bush, against the Cheney, against um, uh, Mitt Romney, etc. You see, we have to stop this. Because this kind of prophetic utterances and oracular orat, oracular uh, works will bring great disaster against the church. Many churches today are going through bankruptcy because of what I'm talking about. Because they have not yet opened their door completely to the, to the Almighty. And let me share with you what God said. I am not part of whatever they are saying. And I am not part of whatever they are doing. So get it very straight. Most of what these prophets are saying, I'm not calling them false prophets. You, you can judge for yourself. It's not right. It is not right. If you hate a people, your soul is going to manufacture a prophecy and visions and dreams against those people. And that's true. And that is what is happening especially in American prophetic circles. Go around and see what I'm telling you. So many of you so-called prophets and prophetess, etc. started your ministries, not even as prophets. You didn't know who was Democrat and who was Republican, or who was nothing. You wanted to bring people to the Lord Jesus. You desired to bring people under the big umbrella of the living Christ. That's all you wanted to do. That's all you love to do. You prayed for people, they received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. People were receiving miracles. Then suddenly you turned because you now discover that those who were writing you bigger check come from the other, uh, come, from, uh, come from a political side that you lean on. Some of you crossed party line. And what has happened to it is this because of money and because of position and status and what you're getting you cannot look those who've done wrong eyeball to eyeball and tell them the truth about the wrongs they're doing you cannot because you are afraid the fear of a man bringeth a snare and that is what has happened to the evangelical christianity and some aspect of the apostolic and pentecostal, pentecostal christianity in america and some other places in the world politicians have learned how stupid and useless a lot of churches and denominations are the christian bodies are easy to be used and easy to be drunk and what has happened they've learned to enter in and seize opportunity and use the masses of the church to permit the drug of politics that is what has happened to prophecies and prophets and the prophetic insight and utterances and declarations and decrease in American religion. And this is not funny. This is not good. This is not funny. Judgment is coming upon you if you continue this. If you cannot stand your ground and ask God to show you the right vision. Not a vision that has already been accumulating in your mind because there are certain groups that you do not like. I heard somebody saying that God will kill all the gay people in America. Another one, he will kill all the, all the abortionists. Another one, he will kill all those who uh, send people to go to war. Are you saying that God should kill George Bush? Are you saying that God should wipe out our soldiers? 
all kind of stuff. I don't get it. God is not happy with this. That's the coolest way I can put it. God is not happy with you when you go about making utterances against your president. You know what you're doing? If he get assassinated, I'm not just talking about Barack Obama, any president. If you keep talking against them, talking against a senator, talking against Sarah Palin, talking against Michelle Bachman, talking against Fox News and MSNBC, you keep doing all this. What happened? And somebody get a shot. Your hand is soiled with blood. Your hand is soiled with blood. Because for you it is a game. But for God it's about life. God never sent you to go into a church and shoot abortionists in the name of trying to save life. Because you've already committed a crime against humanity and a crime against God by doing those things. God did not say to you that you should implement laws and policies against certain group of people in your states because you are majority. God didn't say that. Jesus said, I came to give life and to give it abundantly. And he didn't care who was a Pharisee, a Sadducee, whoever. He gave them life. He performed miracles on them. Today's Christianity go on attacking all these people. But God is saying, I will come to that when we reach that point because there is a lot you need to know about this area. But right here and right now, I'm talking about the prophets. Stop your prophecy. Some of you need to get out of prophetic ministry. You don't need to be there. It's about time you quit. Elijah and Elisha could look at the kings and tell them the truth. So John the Baptist. How many of you can do that? How many of you can look your family members and tell them the truth? Can look at your political group and tell them the truth from God? How many of you have such courage? And you call yourself a prophet? You are joking, man. You are joking, lady. Now let me go to the next thing. The next concern of the living God is about all this business, little business, big business. We do not know where to draw a line between making a profit, prospering, and being greedy. And God is calling those in business to learn. If you are making millions and billions, why are you not sharing it with those who work for you? Why are you setting up workers against workers? And you think that is funny. God is seeing it. And let me share this with you. There's a lot of problems in the way businesses are running in America. We think that people are just toys to be used and thrown away and fired. A little mistake, instead of training people better, we fire them because we do not want to pay their, their retirement benefits and so on and so forth. We've, we've begun to use that ploy and God is coming after you. People are put in 20 years, 30 years and you just get them completely destroyed for one little thing or the other or you just tell them you let them off things like that businesses need to sit down and talk in detail with their workers it's about time that businesses have what i call a moral and a human face business must begin to do that if not the laws of god that govern this universe will close it down it's very easy for god's law and god's force to pass through a business and that will be the end of it. God is not sleeping. He's seeing. What stops you if you are making billions and starting it away you cannot start your people with $10 an hour? What stops you from doing that? What stops you? Why are you setting up people against each other? You don't want no union? There is a place for union for people to organize and ask for their rights. We are not living in old England where a king rules and the rest are peasants. We are not living in that kind of mentality anymore. And we cannot bring it back to today's world. There is a place where if you don't want your business to have um, what we, unions, tell them from the word go. Don't, don't, you don't need to start it here. 
But if you're righteous enough, you will know that people have the right to speak. And those of you who are into unions, you'll know. You should know where the boundary is. Not every year you need a raise. Not every year, even if the business is not making profit. So you should know. You should know how to negotiate. Modern business has to learn the art of negotiation and the art of give and take. And unions have to learn this art of give and take and not paralyzing other people's businesses. That's not fair. Now there is another thing. The church today is in a place of no power and no money. And all the church is doing in fact, the church is even in a place where it has no gospel. All the church is doing is giving a little social service, preaching the word that is the word of man and not the word of God. Where the church talks a lot and is in a place of militantism instead of in a place of strong power. The church has lost her joy. The church is no longer operating from the point of force of power from God and God is very grieved with the church the church has to recover the church has to recover what I will call the place of the fivefold ministries the, the place of the offices whereby God is free to operate in the church and fill the church with joy God is grieved with his beloved let's go to the next thing Missions and missionaries have failed God in some ways. Some have not. A lot of Christians go to the mission field to add another star and another badge to their shoulder that they've been to the mission field and add that to their resume. Some go there to go and civilize the inhabitants of the places where they've gone to. And the Almighty says, you don't go to civilize people. You go to share the gospel and to demonstrate redemption for them. You go to demonstrate the power of God among them so that they will believe that Christ is risen and that Christ is alive and will come again. You go there to learn from the people so that, if possible, the culture of the gospel will help the culture in which you visit. So, modern mission She'll go back to the book of Acts and see how mission work was done in the apostolic time. If not, all we are trying to do as mission will not work. Because a lot of people have learned how to use Christianity for profits. Let's go to the next one quickly. Let's go to the next one quickly. Um... I have talked about the full gospel. Churches, denominations, and religious groups around the world must be given that access to build small communities. They should be able to build structures for advancement of the human lives. <laughs> there is another thing that I have to bring to you to, to see and to know quickly. There is a battle for presence. There is a big battle for presence. God wants the nations to know that there is a battle for presence. Both political presence, spiritual presence, religious presence, educational presence, etc. Financial presence. Christians have to awake to the fact that they need to have strong presence around the nations of the world because other religions are having strong presence in the streets of New York, in the big cities of America. And their prayers, the call for prayer is ringing out. They have the right to do that, the legal right to do that. But Christianity needs to step up. That's all God wants you to know about that. The next thing. Israel must fight for its existence. Israel has the right to fight for its existence because it's a nation that has gone through too many problems. 
Israel must awake to the fact that it must fight back. If America do not want to support Israel to fight, Israel must go out on its own to fight because they are silent allies waiting to help her. That's what I am told to do. So those who think that Israel cannot fight for itself are fooling themselves. Israel will, and Israel must defend itself. And those who go about insulting the people, the Jews, must beware, because God is listening. God has seen, and the cry of the people, right from Eastern Europe, is still rising up to the heavens today. So let's not add more injury and nonsensicality to our people who've already been injured strongly. And let, the, let us allow them to live in that little plot of land that is not even as big as my village. So let's, let's allow Israel to exist. Please, leave them alone. Not only that, all the nations of the faithful must fight to exist. God says that the people of today's world do not have something to live for, something to die for, something to hope for, something to believe in. And that's one of the strongest problems of modern man, modern society. God wants us to have something to fight for, to have something to live for, something to hope for, and something to die for. And we know that biblical religion and we also know that Judaism, it is. We have something to live for, to die for, to fight for, to hope for. This should not be taken lightly anymore. Still have a long way to go. There is another thing. The church must get involved in the world. God shares with me that the church has refused to get involved with the world. That's why the world has accepted to get involved with the church, to deal with the church mercilessly, because the church has refused to deal with the world. The church has accepted John 3.16, but the church has not accepted John 3.17. The church has the right to train her people in how to do business. She has the right to furthermore become the leading people in medicine, in education, etc. And in rulership and in leadership. Uh -huh. Let me say this. The church must be involved in the political life of its citizens, of its society in which she found herself, in as much as it lied within her. There must be people in the church who are called to the political life, and we must support them. There must be people, whether they belong to this party or the other party, we must support our people. But the church is called to be a mediator the church is called the umpire of the world, the umpire of society, the umpire of government. The church is to be like that. There is another thing here that we need to look at. When the church stops being authentic and stop being the ruler of the world, she becomes irrelevant. We have to really, really take note of that. Now, let me begin to speak about Africa. Um, for Africa, the word that come to me is this. Europe have dumped so much money to Africa. Africa shall be abandoned by Europe because they are getting fed up with Africa. That's what God showed me. If Africa do not become adults and begin to care for its own, if they do not begin to shoulder and participate 
in the promotion of human life and building of structure for his own people. Africa shall be 500 years behind the rest of humanity. This is true. If people do not place their own family, community, and societal problem ahead of accumulating for themselves only, this is going to lead to the downfall of Africa. No matter how much you try to use religion, whether Christianity or Islam, it's not going to work. Prayers and worship, all that not going to work because this is something completely different from, 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 from spirituality. Africa must sit down. This is what I discovered. If a leader in Africa decide to furnish 10 villages with boreholes for water and put good roads, build good schools and equip them every year that country in the next 20 years will be very advanced a lot of african countries have abandoned agriculture they have to return back to agriculture that's what i'm being told i mean i've not been there for a while but i'm told that a lot of african countries have abandoned agriculture they they look up to government to do everything for them african nations must once again be involved in business, in trade and commerce, once again. If not, they will be abandoned. If they will not begin to produce things that they can export to other countries and they are only importers, Africa shall be far behind. No matter the degree of education African kids are going to get, it's not gonna help them. University education is not gonna help African children. Hand work is what is going to promote Africa. Trade is what is going to promote Africa. Business is what is going to promote Africa. And not all this unnecessary battle for politics and all these other things that we see in Africa. Okay. Um, India should also take note of what I'm saying. Should take note of what I'm saying. Where people think that education is going to solve their problem, education shall be your demise. Education is good. To make you to be advanced in your thinking but after having that advancement of thought apply it to practical usefulness that's how doesn't mean that you should just go and work for a bank and, and because you are a banker you should go why not have your own business this is where we are going to draw a line and soon europe will no longer be giving money to africa very soon europe will no longer be going to africa to go and help them because Africa has enough wealth to help itself. Now let me go to Europe. Europe has to be very careful about immigration. Those who come into it. Because they, they will do things terrible in Europe. Except Europe is very, very vibrant in its assessment of those that it must allow to come in, to be there. Another thing is that the moral decadent of godlessness, of people not wanting anything to do with religion, shall also be the downfall. Economy alone is not going to keep Europe going. USA. USA is called to participate in three things in the nature of God. They are to be aggressive, they are to be uh, bold and persuasive. If a nation does not want to go along with America, America should lead that nation. If the United Nations does not want to become not just a backing dog, but also a biting dog that can make policies and implement it no matter who is head, then America should just go ahead by themselves. That's what I have seen and that's what I am told to say. American presidents, those we choose to be presidents, are to be gentlemen who knows how to process this initiation of negotiation of coalition of the just but where it breaks down they should go on by themselves they should become aggressive in the pursuit of what will benefit the united states united states should become very persuasive so that it does not be seen to be in the wrong in their doing business they must be aggressive persuasive and very very bold in political life it should be the same there is a time to fight and there is a time to be gentle we must learn how to use both so that we do not fall into one extreme or the other. Another thing 
I've already spoken about uh, about immigration. Oh, this is what God showed me. A lot of people from different countries are interested in migrating to other nations. God is saying, stay where you are, and I will bless you where you are. There are people who migrate to other countries. They don't even make it in those countries. They don't even make it on the boat to those countries. It become, immigration become their own, uh, like we say in Africa, palaver. They were doing well where they were, and they think if they migrate, it will be better. You only do well where you are geographically located, by destiny, by God. So don't think that by migrating to Europe and America is going to favor you. You can stay where you are in your country and become an entrepreneur and know what you are good at. And what happened? The blessing of God will come upon you in, in that place. Let me also say this. Let me also say this really, really quickly. Uh, before I close. Let, let, me, let me push this forward very, very quickly. Um, uh, I've already spoken about the promotion of young people uh, for life in the world. I've already spoken about that, that we have to do something about that really, really quickly. Okay. Um, the mass media. The mass media has become the professors of the universe. And I am told to tell the mass media that they have to be presenters of truth and not entertainers of what just people want to hear. That's what's going to keep modern society safe and sound. You don't just write stuff because you hate somebody. You write stuff because you want to bring out the truth. That's for the mass media. Because our mass media has been sometimes misleading us. Also, if modern society are going to do well, they are also going to depend on the mass media, those of them who knows to go to the root of the problem and bring out the truth. It's about truth. It's not about entertainment. Although entertainment is part of the fun of it anyway. Um, there is this hard part. Financial institutions must make money for themselves but there is what we there is a difference between the law of value of of the promotion of human dignity and life versus the laws of unnecessary smartness the financial institutions almost laid the nations down almost collapsed the nations but for the aggressive, persuasive, and bold moves of a president in America and his and, and his uh, political group. Let's face it. We can say all we want to say. We can fight all we want to fight. The financial institutions almost laid the world on the biggest recession they've ever seen. And of course they did. So let me say this to you. The world has to be grateful to some of the moves that some people made to make this not to be very bad. The financial institution must return back to that place where they were stewards of our money. They should make profits, but they should not gamble with our future. The financial institutions are not well regulated, including the business world. I am told that we will go through some of the major disasters economic-wise that we've ever seen in the world. Government is asked to be an umpire, to regulate but not to over-regulate. They are to watch and to correct. They are not to kill and to make people go out of business. That's not why government is. That's what I'm asked to tell governments of the world. Let me also say this really quick. The need of the world right now 
is a world in which policy makers and policy implementation becomes they coexist and they negotiate it's a world in which god calls people to a coalition kind of relationship any nation that will not cross party line to bring about the good not power not profit not political status but what is right for its people that nation is on its way to demise leave the gay community alone let the church ask god for power and display it so as to convert and redeem same thing goes for the abortionists it's also a place where the gays and the abortionists are called to reflect very strongly on the values of relationship and of the human lives the judgment lies with God let's not kill them and take them out before the time because it's like tearing your heart away because most of them are our very brothers and sisters if we don't like them at least let us not destroy them let us at least promote their human dignity hmm. let me say this there is a place for war and there is a place for peace i'll say it again any nation that is not prepared to go to war when it is necessary will be wiped out and any nation that does not make peace when it's necessary does not reach out for peace will also be wiped out by the unnecessary burden of warfare i've already spoken about governments and what they should do government as a possibility thinker i want to say this this is for the united states it is about time that democrats when it is necessary begin to go to war authorize this war it is a place where republicans where and when necessary must embrace social issues and advocate for the implementation that's what i'm asked to say in that respect I also want to say this. I think um, let let me go into this really, really, uh, really, really quickly, and um, and I will say it. And I think that will be the end of it. Let us stop when natural disasters happen, and we begin to accuse some presidents, some groups that their very existence is the reason why there is natural disaster in some way that because they attack israel or because they say this or because these people are living like this that that's the reason why they have natural disaster let me tell you something every death god doesn't enjoy it from the word go god does not enjoy death in any form so let's not joke with natural disaster nature is dumb sometimes nature go crazy let those who have taken upon themselves to become prophets of natural disasters saying they happen because of this because of that let them be warned because this is not funny anymore when you go on tv and you begin to accuse people that it was because of this because of this, that this natural disaster, why not just enter your plane and carry relief and go and help out instead of doing this trashy talk it's about time that we stop this because those of force of faith we are not enjoying it finally and this will come to an end today it hurts God what we are doing to the children of Ishmael I want to say this 
there are Palestinians who hate what the other Palestinians are doing against the children of Jacob, the Israelis. They are Palestinians who are crying out for help, and we are not listening. It's about time that we listen to those Palestinians who want peace, who enjoy peace, and will never do anything against the Jewish people, but even will be their allies. It's about time that we seek out those among the sons of Ishmael, those in the Arab world, Islamic world, that want to be our allies for good because they love peace, because they want to live alongside us. It's about time that we give them the benefit of a doubt and allow them to live side by side. I'm not here talking about a nation being crafted or whatever. It is that they desire to be treated fairly, justly, and with love. But those of them who have declared war on America, on the West, and on Israel, be prepared for war. Because these nations that you are hating, when they go after you, you can escape it. And you know it. Not even your religion will save you. Because even Allah loves justice. He's a God of mercy and compassionate. Very compassionate. You know it. The Al-Quran said so. So let me tell you, why can't you people be like the Jewish people who love peace and justice and fair play or like America? I want to close with that. When the people of the nations of the earth begin to listen to the word of this prophetic insight, the world, the world will be on the path of peace. If they do not listen, as Revelation 2.29 says, and you decide to go on your extreme way and you are not listening, whatever happens to you, God has forewarned you. He has. He has. The Middle East must open opportunity for his people. If you don't, whatever is the outcome of what is to come, You've been warned. I love you. And I love the Almighty. And I love His Son, Jesus Christ. And in union with the Holy Spirit, I say to you, good night, good luck, and God bless.